Hey there, I'm Angelo, and in this video, learn how to add animation to a slide deck layout using Adobe Animate. In this lesson, we'll explore how to add rotation animation to an infographic and add buttons to start and stop the animation. As an added bonus, I'll also show you how to export the project as an OAM package and place it in an Adobe InDesign project. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, let's start things off by creating a new document in Adobe Animate. I'm gonna click on the Create New button here. That'll launch my Create New Window, New Document window, which I can now create a custom size. The size of this will be 1280 by 720. The frame rate will leave at 30, and the platform type will be HTML5 Canvas. Once you have these settings, go ahead and click Create. Now I've gone over this before, but I do want to import an Illustrator file to this Animate Canvas. I'm just going to jump over to Illustrator, and here is our design. It's an infographic on a slide deck presentation that I want to add some animation to. But have a look in my Layers panel. I've set up all the layers on separate layers, so Gear 1, Gear 2, Gear 3, and so on. I also have a Start button. That's that little circle in the bottom left and a stop, which is right next to it. So this is available to you in the download material for this lesson and you can access it and follow along, but let's go back to animate now. So in animate, I'm just going to go to file and import and then import the stage. And here it is gear icons.ai and I'm going to click open. I'm just going to collapse the, the layers just so it's easier to look at and gauge which ones are on. And you can see they're all checked, so that's good. The other important step here is having this selected, place objects at original position. By the way, that Illustrator file is the same size. It's 1280 by 720, and that's important because it's going to place all the original content in the same place when we import it. So let's do that now. I'm going to click Import. And there you see all the layers are intact and all the content is there from my Illustrator file. Now, one of the first things we want to do is convert all the gear icons into symbols, movie clips, so we can add the animation afterwards. So I'm going to click on the first one here and I'm going to right click and go to convert to symbol. And here I can rename this symbol gear underscore one and the type will be movie clip. I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to shift to the front. Let's just move it backwards. Shift Command, that would be Control and Shift on Windows and your down arrow key. Let's move on to the second one. Right click, convert to symbol. This is gear underscore two. And it is a movie clip, so we're going to click OK. Shift Command, down arrow to move it backwards. By the way, you could also right click and then go to Arrange or Send Backward. Let's click on the third, right click, Convert to Symbol, and this is Gear underscore three, Shift Command down arrow, click the fourth one, right click, Convert to Symbol, and this is Gear underscore four, Shift Command down arrow, click the fifth one, Convert to Symbol, and this is gear underscore five, shift command down arrow. And then let's do this last one, right click, convert to symbol, and this is gear underscore six. Again, shift command down arrow. Now all of our gear icons are now symbols, which allows me to double click now and add animation to. And the animation we're gonna be adding to all six of these are our simple rotations. First thing we want to do is right click again and let's create a motion tween. You can see that adds a motion tween in my timeline here. And in the right side panel, in the properties panel, click on a frame and then down below where it says rotate, let's set the count to one. And by default, it's going to be set to clockwise, which is just fine for this. The other thing I want to do is extend the timeline of this. So I want it to play at about 15 seconds. So just drag the right hand side 
to 15 seconds. Once you've done that, go ahead and go back to scene one and we're out of that and you can see we're back on the main scene here. I can double click on the second gear icon and again, right click, create motion tween. And let's set the count here to one again, but in this case, let's choose counterclockwise. So the first one was clockwise, this one is counterclockwise. And let's extend that motion tween to 15 seconds. Once you've done that, go ahead and exit this, go back to scene one, double click the third one. And you can see by me double clicking them, it just takes me to its own separate timeline where I can add some, some animation to it. Right click, create motion tween. We want the count to be one. And this is clockwise. So an easy way to gauge or to, to remember these are the darker purple ones will be clockwise and the lighter purple will be counterclockwise if you lose track of which ones you've set. Again, I'm just going to extend this to 15 seconds. And then once you've done that, just go back. So these three have been set. Double click, right click, create motion tween. In the frame, we want one, and this will be counterclockwise. And we'll extend this all the way to 15 seconds. Once you've done that, go ahead and exit that. We're back on scene one. Double click, right click, create motion tween. In the frame, set the count to one, and this is clockwise, but we do want to extend that to 15 seconds. So you can see it's just repetition and doing the same action to all five, sorry, six icons. Click back. We have one more to do here, so I'm just gonna double click, right click, create motion tween, and we'll set the count to one, and this will be counterclockwise. And we'll just extend that to 15 seconds. Once you've done that, go ahead and exit, go back to scene one, and there's two ways of testing this out. I can click this play button up top here to test the movie or do command return and that will launch in a web browser and you can see that those are rotating nicely just the way we set them up. Great, now that the animation has been set, it's time to focus on the buttons to start the animation and to stop the animation. So let's go back to our timeline here and here are the buttons. Remember we have a start button here and we have the stop button. So again, we'll have to create these or convert these into symbols. And to do that, remember, right click, convert to symbol. But in this case, we don't want a movie clip. We want button. And let's name this start. And just hit OK. And let's do the same thing to the stop. Right click, convert to symbol. It's already set to button, but we want to call this stop. And click OK. Now we'll also have to give these instance names so that when we're setting up our actions, we can find these buttons and you'll see what I mean in just a sec. So let's click on start first and in the properties panel, click object and under button, there's an instance name field here and let's call this start underscore BTN and let's click on the stop button and in the instance name, stop underscore BTN. Now this next part is very important because we have to add another layer. I'm going to click on the plus icon in the timeline to create a new layer. And this is where we'll add those actions. So we want to rename this layer actions. And for this next part, we'll need the actions panel. To access that, go to window and actions. Now make sure that you're on the actions layer when you're setting up your actions. And you can see it's going to set the actions on the first frame, which is perfect for this. So I'm going to click on add using wizard. And now I can start adding the actions. What is the action we want here? Well, I want to start the animation. I'm going to click next. And how do I want this event to be triggered? On mouse click. And which button do I want? We want start button to start the animation. Once you have that, click finish and add. Let's click on add using wizard again, scroll down and we want stop animation. Let's click next and the triggering event once again will be on mouse click. 
But in this case, we want to choose stop BTN. Remember we added those instance names? This is why it's important. Go ahead and click finish and add. And you can see it writes some code here. You don't have to worry too much about this, but this is the code that will trigger both of those events. So if I press the play test movie now, let's have a look. It's automatically playing, but I can stop it now and start it using these two buttons that we created. But what if I want this animation not to start right away once the page loads? Well, we could set that as well. Let's go back to animate. I'm going to click back on my timeline. And for this, I want to focus on gear one. I'm just going to move this window off to the side for a sec. And I'm going to double click the first icon. And I want to add a stop animation action to this. So I have to create a new layer and let's call this actions. And again, I'm just going to go up to add using wizard and I'm going to select stop animation, click next with this frame. So in other words, the first frame and then click finish and add. So have a look now if I test this out, you can see it does not play on page load, but I can start it and stop it as needed or as wished. So let's go back to animate and I'll show you now how to export it as an OAM file and place it in an InDesign project, which is really cool. So let's go back to the timeline here. I can close the actions window. I'm done with that. And let's go back to scene one. And I want to export this now. To do that, go up to file and let's go to publish settings first. And this is the one that we want, OAM package. This is an animate widget that will work in any program or software that supports HTML5. And in this case, Adobe InDesign does. So I want to check that. And let's just call this animated deck slide. Let's choose the folder. Let's just save it to my desktop. And you can see it's called animated deck slide dot OAM. And I'll click save and hit OK. And then I can go to file and publish and it will be published on my desktop. So let's go to InDesign now and I'll show you how to import it or place it in an InDesign project. All right, InDesigners, I'm back in InDesign. I created a document that's also 1280 by 720. Now let's import that .oam file that we just exported from Animate. To do that, go up to File, Place, and here it is, Animated Deck slide.oam click open and here it is in my loaded cursor i'm just going to start in the upper left click drag and fit it to that entire page and there it is now it comes in as an image it looks like an image but if i test it out i'm just going to click on any of the interactive tools click my epub preview window and again i can start and stop this works in adobe indesign which is really really cool Thank you so much for watching and following along in this video. Leave a like or comment below if you found this video helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date with all my latest content. Want to learn more about Adobe Animate? Check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.